Uh, like Don said, my name is Jenny. I am from up north, Timmins, Ontario. And we are a tree seedling producer up there. We grow between 8 and 12 million tree seedlings a year. Uh, most of this is for the uh, forest industry, although we do grow some for landscaping and, and uh, Christmas tree growers as well. So the greenhouses up north were first established in 1980 by my parents. Uh, and this was when container growing of nursery stock was new. Uh, the 80s were a very exciting time. There was a lot of research being done. There was symposium. There was growers associations. Uh, and at this time, everything was done by hand when they first started. Um, so in the 80s, like I said, it was a very exciting time. Um, it was a new industry and everything was done by hand. It didn't take very long before we did start to automate some of our processes. Uh, seating machines, filling lines, watering systems that run on tracks. Uh, these were all things that were used to increase uh, well, improve production as far as time goes as well as they were far more accurate than doing these things by hand. Uh, come the 90s the government and industry moved a lot towards mixed wood management in the forestry world uh, which meant that there was a lot less in interest in tree seedling development and tree seedling research uh, and as a result there really wasn't any changes to the industry since the 80s. Uh, there was no research, real research being done and uh, today a lot of people are still doing the same, same things the same way now as they were back in the 80s. Uh, the 2000s we started to see a decline in forestry. There was less volumes being harvested so there was less need for uh, trees for reforestation. And uh, as a result obviously um, the, the production or cost became a little more competitive and it was driving the cost down. Uh, this also happened at the same time when clients were starting to demand more from the nursery growers uh, in that they wanted larger stock uh, to help combat restrictions in herbicide use. Um, and they are also, for some reason, all moving towards cold storage, meaning that all of our trees had to be packaged and put into freezers for the winter, which was a fairly intensive process. So while the cost of the tree seedlings was being driven down, our cost of production was also increasing. Uh, the 2000s, we also experienced a systematic increase to our minimum wage in Ontario. In 2004, minimum wage was $6.85 an hour, and over the past 10 years, we've increased, and today we are at $11 an hour. So it's a significant increase that we've basically had to absorb up to this point, and uh, it's something that we definitely need to address. This also ironically coincided with a uh, shift in our labor market to somewhat less motivated uh, employee where we were having a hard time in general just finding enough staff to get all the work done. Uh, so it was just a, becoming an increasing challenge and, and we realized that something needed to be done. So in 2007 myself and another uh, recently graduated forester we did buy into the company. Um, we were the succession plan to the company uh, and this all happened within a few months of basically a global economic crash uh, for which forestry was definitely uh, affected and we were facing basically a much different business scenario than what we had been working in. So after a lot of deliberation we both uh, decided that we did foresee a future in this tree seedling growing industry. Uh, we figured that trees were going to be required and we wanted to be part of that future. Uh, but we did realize that we had to change. Things were not going to be done the same way. Uh, so basically we took a look at the far more advanced horticulture industry and uh, we drew inspiration from there. Um, a lot of these places are already automated. They are using a lot of transplant systems and, and we knew that was the direction we needed to go. Uh, this was an unlikely move. Uh, we are the only ones in our industry that have been making the move. Uh, but that being said, in 1980 we had 33 tree seedling growers in Ontario and we are down to seven. Uh, so it is a market that has been uh, decreasing largely and everybody is basically just running their infrastructure into the ground so it's either innovate or get out so we, we are choosing to innovate and, and that's when we first developed our, our, our plan for total automation. Uh, so first of all we made a list of everything we needed to address um, and of course the main objective for, all, at us, for us at all times is to produce a superior product. We are growing trees for reforestation areas. We want these trees to survive in the field, we want the forest to continue, and, and that's our main objective. So a list of the issues that we needed to address. Um, poor seed germination. It was becoming an increasing problem with some of our species, uh, and it was something we, we wanted to address. Uh, all of our intensive labor activities, so sorting, weeding, uh, thinning, moving, root pruning, packaging, these were all things we wanted to address. Pathogens. 
especially with the larger stock requirements from our clients, uh, mold was becoming more of an issue, uh, especially with the bigger seedlings. And of course, uh, pathogens like to, to evolve and they were becoming resistant to some of our, chem our normal chemical controls. So we wanted to address that. Uh, material handling, uh, trays, inserts, uh, totes, all of the things that we have to manage and move and sterilize, we wanted to streamline this process. And at the same time, we did want to minimize our, our waste. Um, we, want, we did want to use reusable packaging, but we did want to have it uh, in a manageable aspect. Uh, as far as cold, cold storage goes, there was many issues to address here as well. Um, just the volume of tree seedlings to be processed within a, a certain time frame. Uh, the freezing times, thawing times, mold within the freezers, uh, as, well, as well as changing delivery schedules. They tend to change quite rapidly. We are still working a lot on a lot of these things, but uh, I will talk to you about how transplanting has addressed many of them. So the plan was to develop a fully automated system from seeding all the way through packaging delivery to the field and then have, have the delivery to the field in a way that was conducive to tree planting and the survival of the seeding ultimately. Uh, we wanted to optimize our growing area and uh, produce a superior product. So to start this all off, uh, we first decided to do some consulting, a little bit of research. And in 2010, we per first approached Don Willis from Jiffy. Uh, we had worked with Don for a long time and uh, we knew he'd had a lot of experience globally uh, in the growing industry. So we, we do consider him to be a forward thinker and, and expert in, in the growing world. Um, we talked to him about our plans to automate and Preliminary research indicated that when you automate, you're best to stick with one type of growing system uh, so that uh, you're standardizing everything. Uh, talking with Don, we did agree that we would start uh, building our system around the Jiffy pellet. As we, and we had been using the Jiffies for a long time. We'd been direct seeding into them since the uh, early 90s, and we were happy with the product. It does provide uh, really good root structure for our, our tree seedlings, and they do have good outplant performance. Uh, Jiffy's willingness to participate in the project obviously was uh, a very large contributing factor as well. Um, so at this time we helped design a new tray. Part of our, our process was to eliminate root pruning so we did want to have an air pruned tray and we did want to have it and we wanted to have a tray that was reusable as well as we needed a tray that was going to work with our existing infrastructure. So we were using Can-Am trays and we did have benches and config certain configurations and we, and we did want to still use these areas. So we did design a new tray with Jiffy. Uh, and then with consultation, uh, well, cons consulting with various other parties, we, we developed an action plan based on uh, industry experts and what our clients needed. Uh, in 2011, we started conducting trials with a lot of our mini plugs. Um, we grew all of our five main species in these mini plugs and hand transplanted them by hand uh, just to make sure that all of our species did transplant. Um, it, it is always a bit of a concern uh, with different plant matter, is it going to transplant well? Our main five species are black spruce, white spruce, red pine, white pine, and jack pine. And from our small trial, we did, we could, we could see that everything was going to survive. So we could continue with the project. So basically, uh, we came up with an ultimate plan. We wanted to direct seed all of our, all of our crops, single seeded into mini trays. Um, this really condensed our growing area or this would really condense our growing area so that we could focus all of our heat, light, watering, fertilization into a smaller area. Uh, this is important for us especially because we start seeding in February and up in Northern Ontario it is very cold so if we can minimize the area that we're heating then obviously that is a benefit to us. Uh, this would also help maximize the seed. Um, again we are having some germination issues with some of our crops. A lot of our seed collections are wild seed collections uh, so it doesn't, there's a lot of biodiversity in there and uh, we do want to capture all the seeds that do germinate. Um, it did result in, if we had poor germination, a lot of waste in the mini products, but it is better to take your hit at that stage than in the, in the full grown uh, mini or full container sizes. Uh, our intention was then to transplant all of these mini, mini plugs into Jiffy containers. Um, and again, we had developed a new tray that was reusable. So we would have to have a system for filling these trays with the Jiffy pellets as well. Uh, we would transplant everything, move them to our growing areas, grow them. Our intention was to then move them back to a grading and sorting area where they could then be graded, sorted, packaged, put in the freezer, and in the springtime, take them out of the freezer, load them into our trailers, and ship them to our clients frozen. That was our ideal scenario. 
So um, in 2012, well, that was our first year transplanting. Um, we started by trans or single seeding everything into the Performa plug. Uh, the Performa 512 tray was something that worked very well for us. Um, so we did single seed everything into the trays. And again, our intention was to have a fully automated transplanting system by this time with vision capabilities, but due, due to logistics and whatnot, we did not have uh, a unit for this year in particular. Um, there was, this was going to be the first time that these transplant units were going to be transplanting directly into Jiffy's, and we didn't want to rush the process. We didn't want to get something that was only going to kind of work, so we did take our time. Um, so this year we did purchase uh, a used transplanter that did not have vision capabilities. So we did transplant everything, but then we had a whole crew of people on the end of the line taking out the empties and replacing them with full trays. So it was a very labor-intensive transplanting year. Um, but it was a learning experience. Um, we did learn that obviously on a large scale that the transplanting was successful. Our, our method was going to work as well as there was various uh, benefits to growing or to, to transplanting the seedlings that we discovered, um, which we can, we can go over later if anybody's interested in growing tree seedlings, but uh, th there was some physiological changes in the seedling that were of uh, benefit to us and did help us in producing a, a superior product. Um, and this year as well, 2012, we did work on developing a new package for our cold storage. Um, when you're automating, everything has to be in configurations that can be read by machines. And uh, so we did form a new package that we, we believed could be automated. Um, there is no off-the-shelf uh, um, machine available to package these things. Uh, so we still did that all by hand. Uh, we were able to semi-automate automate with conveyor belts, but uh, at that point, everything was done by hand as well. So that was our first year transplanting, and, and we did successfully transplant our crops. 2013, uh, we again moved ahead with our transplanting automation line. Uh, we did seed everything again into the Performa plugs. We continue to be happy with this product. Everything germinates very well in it. Uh, the seedlings hold very well in it, and we were able to hold them a little bit longer than expected. And the plugs themselves hold together very well for the transplanting, so they, they work pretty good all around. Uh, this year we did have to, um, and I guess I forgot to mention the previous year, um, we did use transplant everything into the Jiffy 30 pellets. Um, all of our trays came preloaded as we, um, it was the first year that we had the trays, so when we purchased the trays they did come preloaded with pellets. Uh, they did get expanded in a new expander and we did dibble them to, uh, to provide a hole for the transplant, that was very important. So our second year transplanting, this was going to be our first year where we were loading the pellets into the trays ourselves. So Jiffy did come up with a, a pellet loader. So we were able to buy our Jiffy's in bulk in boxes. We loaded them into the pellet, or we loaded them into our trays. They continued through the expanding line uh, into the dibbler where the hole was, was formed. And this year as well, we purchased a TTA flex planter with 48 grippers. Now this transplanter did have vision capabilities and we were able to greatly reduce our labor from the previous year where we had people doing it all by hand. Uh, so this worked very well. We did get everything transplanted, and uh, it is, uh, we were quite happy. We did 9.5 million trees transplanted last year. Uh, that being said, we didn't have any, uh, from then on, we did move to our, our packaging line, and we haven't had made any great headway in automating that yet. So now we're in 2014. Uh, this year, I did decide to direct seed some of our crops uh, for various reasons. Germination was high and uh, the crop type that was required didn't really require it. However, we are still transplanting 7 million seedlings. Uh, we're down to about 2 million left to need to be transplanted, uh, and, and we do have everything uh, working the same, same way as last year with our uh, pellet loader, expander, dibbler, and, and the TTA transplanter. And, uh, and overall, we have worked out the bugs, the learning curve from the previous year, and, uh, and we are, our production is obviously better our second year you're doing it. So to date, just a few things that we've learned along the way. Uh, first and foremost is that it is hard to be the first in anything um, when you are transplanting for a, an industry that isn't used to it. Uh, there isn't a lot of backup. There is a lot of hiccups along the way. And it is sometimes difficult to get your clients on board with these hiccups because uh, it is just growing pains essentially. And, and over time, they will be ironed out. But it's the initial, it's the initial years it is hard to make everybody happy. Um, and secondly, it's just timing. Obviously, when you're growing anything, there's, there's desired timelines for seeding, for transplanting, for packaging, for all of these things. And, and the, the biggest struggle we've had to date is just maintaining all of our timelines. 
as soon as you're working with outside the normal range of anything, uh, you're, you're compromising your crop. So um, we have had to work very diligently with our suppliers to make sure that we are getting the production we need from all of our equipment. And that's everything from down to the water heaters, heating the water. Um, we, every, everything seems to have their, their hiccups and we've been working on with all of our, our manufacturers on that. Um, also, the capital cost for acquiring this automated equipment is quite high. Um, I'm not saying it's not worth it, but in this day and age it is hard to finance these things. So it is definitely a consideration you need to take into account when, when moving in this direction. Um, especially in forestry, we had, a, we had a bit of a hard time acquiring uh, the funding to do so, but obviously we have proceeded and we, and we are making it work. Um, and then just from the video behind me, you can see um, a lot of the things, processes are automated, but there is still a considerable amount of people working. Um, we do hope over time, as we continue to automate, that we will be able to reduce the amount of people required. And right now, the transplanting line itself is fairly automated. It's the systems around it that we need to automate a bit more in order to, to really streamline our process. Uh, and then I guess the next thing just to consider when you're moving towards automation is um, we basically had to move in completely into automation all at once. There was no real phase in period uh, just because it is difficult to run two systems at once. Uh, and last year was basically a 10 million trial that we ran with our, with our equipment and it can be uh, a little bit stressful at times trying to get everything done. Um, and you want to really, really make sure you've done your research and make sure that you're, you're using the products you want to use uh, because making a switch after that point is, is very difficult. Um, we are, like I said, continuing to automate and we will try to, uh, whether it's moving systems and our packaging systems, we, we may have to phase that in a little more slowly just because it is quite, quite a big leap when you, when you take that step. So ultimately I would say that, uh, and I mean, we, we were warned, we knew that it was going to take a little while to get into it, but uh, it does take a little longer than you would expect moving everything into automation and obtaining the, the uh, production that you need. Uh, it was definitely a little more costly than we were expecting just because it did take a little bit more labor initially to get uh, to where we wanted to be. But ultimately it is the road we need to go down. I think uh, if in any industry we need, we need to automate um, and, and with our increasing minimum wage and I'm sure it's increasing everywhere, uh, it's only making automation more uh, affordable as well. Um, uh, the machines show up every day. They can work consistently. They are computers, so they have their hang-ups, but uh, um, you get used to fixing them and, and you can make it run pretty well. So overall, we are happy with all of our, with all of our innovation and we are working to, con to expand upon it. And uh, it is exciting um, and tiring, but uh, it's what we need to do to just continue in the industry.